Tulsa tendrá en breve un proceso electoral. Ya sea que usted vote o no vote, es importante que se mantenga informado de quién va a ser el próximo alcalde en los próximos años en esta ciudad. Y hoy me encuentro con el congresista Monroe Nichols, a quien le agradezco que haya aceptado esta entrevista para platicar por qué la comunidad hispana tendría que votar por él en la próxima elección. Monroe, thank, thank you for coming. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, you know, I think the, I'll start with my record. So I've been in the Oklahoma House of Representatives for the last eight years. And over those eight years, uh, I've, only, I've always voted with uh, the community. Most recent example was House Bill 4650, or 4156, which is the one that, you know, wanted to criminalize, you know, give felonies and misdemeanors to folks who were uh, not documented in, in, in Oklahoma. Uh, and fought against that piece of legislation. In fact, I think when you and I met for the first time, we were at the church uh, and the rally pushing back against it because uh, I think those things are fundamentally not, not helpful. That comes from, in part, the district that I've represented over the last eight years is about 25% Hispanic. And I was, I, uh, my house is in the Kendall Whittier neighborhood. Uh, and so, you know, for me, it's a long history of standing with, with the community. Uh, and I think that is important when you're going to vote for somebody. Everybody who comes on this radio station is going to say, oh, I've, you know, I support the community. I have a long record of, of supporting the community. I also think just, you know, when we think about the future of this city, most of Tulsa's growth uh, has come from uh, our, uh, Hispanic, uh, our Hispanic Tulsans. And I think it's important for us as we think about the future of this community to not just embrace that, but really, you know, consider what is it going to take to move this community forward and moving this community forward as a whole means that uh, those folks who are uh, of the of this community have to be an important part of it. Uh, and that is from an economic standpoint. That's from a political standpoint. Uh, so working with the community on the things that are important to folks is always going to be uh, number one for me. And again, it's built on eight years of, of, of being here and being with the community and, and, and fighting for this community uh, every day in the legislature. ¿Y qué pasa con los hispanos no ciudadanos que llegaron aquí sin estatus legal, que no tienen papeles pero que realizan trabajos duros como la construcción, limpieza, cocina y otros trabajos de manufactura? ¿Deberían tener miedo si ganan? ¿Seguirá la policía de Tulsa operando sin atacar a individuos indocumentados que no son criminales o esto podría cambiar? Big city in the country. Uh, I think part of that is making sure that everybody who lives here feels safe and they feel like they can reach out to law enforcement if they need something. And certainly, will never feel like they're targeted uh, for any reason, particularly when they're just trying to live their lives, take care of their families, go to work, and those types of things. I think what builds an excellent city is diversity, and I think we have to embrace folks uh, in this community. And certainly, like I said before, would never tolerate any targeting from the police department, but any targeting from anybody for that matter. And I think that a big part of that is making sure that this that the community is reflected in the mayor's office and, 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 and the folks that you hire and how they're able to engage and how the city uh, can really have a footprint somewhere here in East Tulsa and other, and other parts of town. So like if you if you need a city service or if you need help, uh, you come to us. We're not going to ask you if you're documented or not. Uh, we're going to be in a position to help uh, take care of whatever it is needs to be taken care of. Because I do believe uh, that there's a number of folks in this community uh, who are undocumented who are part of the fabric of this community. And I think we have to always protect those folks just like we protect anybody and make sure they can thrive in this community. Look, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the day uh, that the federal government figures out an easy, clean pathway uh, to citizenship. But in the meantime, what I care about is how we do things together here in Tulsa. Uh, and I think the number one thing is nobody in this community can feel like they are a target of the police or anybody else. And so, um, you know, you know, The Tulsa Police will continue to operate without targeting folks, uh, but we're also going to make sure we put some, 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 some checks in place to make sure if that ever happens, folks have a place they can go to to report that type of stuff. Uh, because again, my deal as a mayor is to make sure that everybody who is in this community feels a part of this community, feels safe in this community, and I think that starts to not feel like they're a target uh, of police or anybody else. 
Uh, the Mayor G.T. Bynum el actual alcalde G.T. Bynum inició un programa llamado New Tulsans para ayudar a los recién llegados, especialmente a los empresarios independientemente de su procedencia. ¿Continuarán con este programa o lo eliminará? I want to know from the community what are ways that we can expand those type of things. Like I said before, I want everybody who's in this community to feel part of this community. And, and whatever we have to do to make sure that folks can thrive from an economic standpoint, to make sure they have what they need to educate their 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 children and make sure those families can thrive. That's what I care about. And so, you know, you can look for me to be in a position to expand a program like that. Uh, and it's in large part because, like I mentioned before, House District 72 that I've represented for the last eight years. Uh, you know, we have a strong and thriving Hispanic community, but we also have a number of other diverse communities that are that are new to, to the country. You have a here in East Tulsa, for example, as you all know, we have a thriving Asian community and we got a lot of folks who are new to this community. I think Tulsa is an international city and we need to make sure that's reflected in everything we do. So the expansion of those types of programs, I think, is how we do that. Uh, so, you know, there won't be any rollbacks, but but it will certainly be. You know, working with the community, say, what do we need to do to help businesses thrive, to help people thrive, to help families thrive? Uh, and that's going to be my priority as mayor. ¿Cuál es su plan para abordar el aumento del crimen en la ciudad? Yeah, yeah. You know, again, I think that's a, a big part of that is working with the community. I think a lot of times when we see increases in crime, uh, a lot of times there's a, there's a fundamental distrust between police and the community where folks don't feel comfortable reporting things, those types of things. I think we have to really work hard on that community policing aspect of it. Uh, but I think also there's some real challenges that we have, and this is citywide, these are citywide challenges. Uh, I was just talking last night about uh, the prevalence of, of certain weapons, uh, guns and those types of things that are stolen out of cars just people don't properly secure them. Uh, I think we have to make sure we educate people on those types of things, but we also have to make sure that everybody in this community, particularly young people, see a pathway to a really strong and solid life that does not necessarily mean going into uh, any sort of criminal activity. I think this is something we challenge, the challenge we have with all, with all young people. I have a 16 year old son. I know the challenges and the, and the temptations that, that young people face. And if they don't feel like there's opportunity somewhere, it is very easy to go in a different direction. And so we certainly need to increase uh, the number of, of law enforcement officers. I mean, I think we're 180 or some odd officers short That's only part of the solution. The other part of the solution is making sure that, again, we're working every day with communities to say, like, hey, what, what do we really need to make this city safe? And I think my job as a mayor is to deliver on those things. It's everything from, you know, streetlights in some neighborhoods uh, to certainly, you know, combating the prevalence of, of dangerous weapons that are, as I said, oftentimes stolen out of cars, and then making sure we're investing in education and things that truly are at the root cause of why we see so much crime In the community, I think if we do those things, we'll see crime go down. Uh, and I think it's something that we can all that we can all take a lot of pride in. But it's something we have to do together. Like the police presence is only one part of that. The other part of it is how are we working with communities to make sure they're absolutely safe. The other, the other problem is uh, yeah. how did you plan the others? ¿Cómo piensa abordar el tema de las personas sin hogar, los homeless? In a permanent way. De manera permanente y al mismo tiempo equilibrar las preocupaciones de quienes no quieren violaciones a los derechos humanos y aquellos que quieren más rigor por parte de las autoridades como los comerciantes, peatones, ciclistas y personas afectadas por el uso de espacios públicos. I think I'm the only candidate in the mayor's race right now that's actually released a plan on homelessness. And that plan is all about how do we find you know, ways to end homelessness as we know it today. Uh, and so we put out a plan that gets us there by, by 2030. And how, we, how we're going to do that is, one, we're going to take ownership of the issue of the mayor's office. Uh, so that means getting somebody a point who's actually going to lead the citywide effort on homelessness. What does that mean? That means making sure that we're investing in data systems so folks who have a substance abuse uh, issue or a mental health issue or folks who are situationally homeless, we're finding the, the services that they need to specifically deal with their need and not treating everybody the same. Uh, as I uh, know it, there are uh, somewhere estimated about 3,000 people who 
are living on the streets right now. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a large number, but it's not an impossible number. So we do those things and in, 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 in addition to that, getting a low barrier shelter online and then just increase our affordable housing stock, right? We actually don't have enough affordable housing in this community to meet the needs of folks. And, and then I think at the end of the day, uh, we also have to make sure that while I know the Supreme Court has kind of criminalized homelessness, the state of Oklahoma has criminalized homelessness, you know, if somebody already doesn't have resources, giving them a ticket for being homeless is not going to do anything. They can't, they can't pay it. I think what we have to do is make sure that we're matching services to the people on the street and also making sure those folks who, who truly, you know, have these chronic issues, uh, that we address them and we address them fully. I think we can absolutely do it. Right now, as a community, we're spending a significant amount of money trying to solve this, this challenge. We're not doing it in a coordinated way right now, and that's why people are so frustrated. I saw a poll that was taken. It said 85% of Tulsans don't think the city can solve the issue of homelessness. Um, the plan that we put out there is a plan that is based on other communities that have actually done it. Uh, so it's not pie in the sky. It's not something that is impossible. We're just making it up because we're running for office. Uh, it is based on the very best strategies for getting people off the street and keeping them off the street. Right now, homelessness is getting 9% worse almost every year. Family homelessness, so those living with children, is 34% up from when it was in, from what it was in 2020. 900 kids at Tulsa Public Schools alone are homeless, and about 1,200 kids are in families facing eviction. We have to make sure that we can stabilize those families in, in their place. Like I say, get that affordable housing stock on and make sure we coordinate services so that folks who, who truly need specific care they absolutely get in this community. We do those things we will in homelessness as we know it. And the plan that we put out there, I think in April, uh, we believe, I, I, I have confidence gets us there by 2030. Okay. ¿Tienes planeado incrementar los impuestos o los impuestos actuales son suficientes para tu plan de gobierno? Yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't have any plans to raise taxes. I think it's more about how we spend our resources more effectively and how we partner with the philanthropic community, how we partner with business owners. Uh, and make sure that every dollar that we're spending is highly is a highly effective dollar. We're tracking those, and are we getting the outcomes we want for every dollar that that we spend as a city? Uh, I think if we were to roll back to even the homelessness question, affordable housing, we have somewhere around 70 or 100 million dollars that the next mayor will have to help address the issue of housing. Uh, and so we have that on the way. Uh, when we think about every dollar we spend at the city, you know, thinking about how is that helping? children and family and business owners? Are we, are we putting people in a better position than they were today? And so the things that work, we'll keep investing in them. The things that don't, we're not gonna invest in those things anymore. And those things that don't work, that we're spending money on, reinvesting that in the strategies that work, I think we'll, we'll find that we have as much money as we need in addition to working with our nonprofit partners. I think the city budget this year reached a billion dollars for the first mm -hmm. time in our, in our city's history. Um, you know, it, it's kind of crazy to say, you know, billion dollars can probably go kind of fast, but if we can start to show what we get for that money, like we, I think oftentimes citizens don't know, you're spending all this money, what are you doing with it, right? Uh, I think if we can start to show people the difference that we're making with those resources, and if we start to hold ourselves accountable for making sure we understand the difference we make in those resources, we have as much money uh, as we need to meet the needs of the people across this community, but it is a matter of priorities. I think the other thing that we have to pay attention to there's some hidden taxes sometimes. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how closely you look at your water bill and mm -hmm. additional fees and Same. that kind of stuff. It, your water bill is uh, paying a little bit for water and then a lot for, for some other fees. And so there's some hidden taxes there that we want to get on top of to make sure that, you know, we're actually investing in the infrastructure in this community. That's going to allow us not to continue to put that burden on folks. Because a lot of folks who are struggling uh, to make their own household budgets work, adding an additional fee on a water bill can be a problem. Uh, so, so my goal is uh, obviously no plans to raise taxes. Uh, I don't think there's a need for it, but I do think the accountability around how we spend people's money, people's hard earned money back to building our infrastructure, back to taking care of our citizens is, is my highest priority. And I think we have plenty to make that happen. Okay. So, anything else? Hay algo más que quiera agregar a esta entrevista, Monroe? You know, what, I, what, what I would say, um, Everybody knows how important this election is. And I think you, you can think about that everywhere from President of the United States down to a school board member. But when we think about this mayor's race, and I'm speaking specifically to the Hispanic community, but I'd say this to anybody. Um, we know that in Oklahoma, things can be um, uh, 
not necessarily all that inviting for, for, for new Americans. And I think oftentimes folks in leadership in the city are silent when those things happen. When I came to uh, the church and the follow-up to House Bill 4156, outside of Senator Brooks and Representative uh, Alonzo Saldivar, I don't think that any other elected official was there. Uh, and so I think it's critical that everybody understand the importance of having a leader in the mayor's office that is with the community, not when it's convenient when they're running for office, but has been with the community forever because there's going to there's gonna come a time where the next version of some hateful bill was 1804 back in the day. Now it's House Bill 4156. Those things are going to continue to come up. There has to be somebody in the mayor's office willing to speak up when this community gets attacked. And I think I'm the, I know, I don't think I'm the only person in this race that's ever done that. And that will also be reflective in how I lead. It's not just about speaking up, it's not just, but, but it, it shows the character and the values of a person. And my values sit in a place where anytime folks are attacked, anytime people are marginalized just because of who they are, uh, that's not gonna work for me. It's not gonna work for me because my own family tradition comes from folks who have been attacked because of what they look like. And, uh, and, and so I hope people understand that this is not just an election to sit out on. This election will certainly shape the future of our city. It'll shape how inviting of a city we are. It'll shape how who gets a seat at the table. It will shape how, how kids uh, view their own neighborhoods and their own city. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I hope people internalize that because there's going to be a real question about, you know, the name that you may hear more often. Um, but I think this has to be about who's going to be most effective in standing up for the community and making sure that si the city of Tulsa is a city for everybody. Thank you. Absolutely. Síguenos en Instagram como Que Buena Tulsa. Síguenos en Facebook como Que Buena Tulsa. Suscríbete a nuestro canal de YouTube, Que Buena Tulsa. Búscanos en Twitter, Que Buena Tulsa. Que, que buena.